Welcome to our virtual worship service for September 6th, the 14th Sunday of Pentecost. Under normal circumstances, next Sunday, September 13th, would have been our annual church picnic and worship at the river. Since we're not yet able to gather together in person, I'd like to invite you to a very special virtual edition of Worship on the River that will feature, among other highlights, the first sermon at Redeemer from our new vicar, Mary Button. The 13th will also mark the end of our fast from communion. Each week, beginning next Sunday at 11 a.m., following Worship at the River, Pastor Taylor will be live streaming a service of Holy Communion via Zoom. Instructions on how to access that live stream will be distributed this week via email and our Facebook page. Those wishing to participate are advised to make ready their own communion elements, bread and wine or juice, to be consecrated during the Holy Communion. Be advised that we'll also be sending out Eucharistic ministers with communion packets for those who may not be able to join virtually. If you know someone who should receive communion in this way, or would be willing to help distribute the elements, please contact the church office. Immediately after the service of Holy Communion, you'll be encouraged to remain online for a virtual coffee hour with others with whom you may not have seen in a long time. This is all next Sunday, September 13th, and we hope that you'll be able to join. Thank you too for your continued financial support. As a reminder, you may send your checks to the church office at 104 Wirt Street or contribute online by clicking the link that is above my left shoulder. Now, please enjoy our virtual service for today, September 6th, the 14th Sunday of Pentecost, as this is the day the Lord has made. A reading from Ezekiel. Now you mortal say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live, turn back, 
Turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Thus ends the reading. from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Thus ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> the Gospel reading for today deals with relationships. It deals with relationships in community, and it deals with reconciliation as well. And that's kind of what this is about. If the, a member uh, sins against you, point out that fault. In other words, between the two of you. If that doesn't work, then invite someone else. And if that doesn't work, then you involve a larger community. The interesting thing about this passage for me is that it's not about having that person acknowledge the wrong or necessarily ask for forgiveness and then have forgiveness given in return. That isn't even discussed here. It's really about communication and it's about listening. And Jesus uses the word 
listen. And listening is an active part of a process in every relationship, whether it's between two people or whether it's uh, between a group of people or whether it has to do with family or whether it has to do with being on the job or yes, in congregational life too. It's about listening. And listening, I think, is an art. It's a skill. There are some people that are naturally good at it. I think some of the best interviewers that I've ever heard are also the best listeners. That's why I think somebody like Larry King was such a good interviewer because he put out a short question and then sat back and listened and then responded based on what the answer was. But it's not always easy to be a good listener, to be what we call in the mental health field an active listener. And that's a large part of what it means uh, to be uh, in, in the mental health field is to be that person that listens to the other, intensely listens to the other without judgment. When I was uh, in internship, in my second year of internship in particular, um, in supervision, uh, one of the things that, that I learned is to do less. In other words, to be the, the, the person who's not going to lead the other, the client, in a particular direction. Like even saying something that I would say normally say as a pastor, like, hey, how you doing? How has your week been? That can be a leading question for somebody when that's not the space that they're in. So to sit back and just be present and let the other person talk is much, much better in terms of helping to facilitate um, that person's situation. But I think that's also true uh, in the gospel reading as well. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. So in other words, this is the person going and having the other person listen. But in any relationship, listening has to take place on both sides. Otherwise, nothing gets accomplished. We know that all too well. In, uh, in acute traumatic stress management, which is a basically a psychological first aid for not just first responders, but for anybody that can participate in. We had some training done uh, last year by Dr. Ray Shelton with the Kingston Interfaith Clergy Association. And there were a number of us that went through this. I went through the training a number of times, and I've learned a lot about it each and every time I've gone through the training. But one of the things that it was so impressed upon me is just to be present, that silence is golden, and that what you say is very powerful, but keep what you say to a minimum. For example, if somebody, if you were to arrive on a scene and you would have a first responder there and the first responder is in shock, you would say something like, hi, my name's Tom. Keep it simple. Is there anything I can do for you right now? Can I get you a cup of coffee? Can I get you a bottle of water? Can I, what, what can I do to help you in this moment? And then just to be there and to be present. Community relationships are the same way. And we all bring our own stuff from our own family of origins to the table whenever we gather together as a community. So whether it be family and extended family or um, in the workplace or in congregational life too. To be able to sit, to be able to listen intently and to respond and have pe other people listen to you, you listen to other people, that fosters good working relationships but it just fosters a sense of functionality that's so much needed. We're in an age right now in the midst of this pandemic where there's a lot of friction. There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of fear on multiple levels across society. And that's understandable. But in particular, now I think it's a time to be a good listener as best as you can. And to have other and to have a network of people that were willing to listen to you as well and uh, so maybe that's the ultimate message that i'm getting out of this passage today jesus is about restoring relationships and that's what the passage deals with dealing conflict is normal and natural but when honesty and transparency is put out there those are the goals i think for all of us at least for me, that I need to work on all the time. 
to always make sure that I'm in that space because if I'm not in that space, then I'm not going to be helpful. So um, that's my prayer for you and for me and for all of us in church life that uh, we listen to each other. We may not always agree. That's okay. But that we listen to each other. We respect each other and we work for wholeness and we work for togetherness and we work for community relationships now and always. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are beginning a new school year, that both students and teachers will be blessed in their academic endeavors. Almighty God, you give wisdom and knowledge. Grant teachers the gift of joy and insight, and students the gift of diligence and openness, that all may grow in what is good, honest, and true. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially our members, our nursing home and assisted living residents, our homebound members, our military, our families, friends, and enemies, and for those we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died, especially Nathan Bruzehoff and Christopher Burns. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer our Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let justice flow like streams of sparkling water pure, enabling growth, refreshing life, abundant cleansing shore. Let righteousness roll on as others' cares we need, an ever glowing stream of faith. Translated into deed. So may God's plumb line strength define our measure true, and justice right and peace pervade this world our whole life through. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.